it's Anne Murphy here, the blog coach. How are you today? Welcome to another weekly Q&A. And today's topic is all about bounce rate. And it really, this um, weekly live is really just to set your mind at ease. I know especially when you're uh, just starting out blogging, it can be so overwhelming with all of these terms and uh, words and phrases that you've never heard before and then bounce rate gets bounced around and you're kind of wondering, oh, it's just another thing that I have to think of and, and learn and, and wonder about. So I just want to set your mind at ease and explain a little bit about it. It is important for your website and growing your business, but just a little bit of um, basic um, knowledge about it will put your mind at ease and um, give you a better understanding of it. So um, is bounce rate important for your blog? Well, yes, it is. Ultimately, you do want people to um, be taking action when they visit your blog and uh, clicking on other areas of your blog, uh, visiting other pages, other posts. And that's why, uh, as a blog coach, what I coach my clients is it is imperative that you have uh, a good flow of information on your website. And I teach my clients how to set up your home page so that it's optimized for people to take action, know exactly where all the information is, know exactly what type of information you provide so people can take action. So bounce rate is actually a Google Analytics tool. Uh, it's a, a metric that measures um, the action taken uh, over the course of period, a period of time compared to the total number of visits on your blog. So your bounce rate over a 30 day period could be 70%, it could be 40%. So the higher the bounce rate means that the quicker people are landing on your page, not taking any action, not clicking on any links or buttons, and they're just exiting. Now, um, if people are visiting your blog and your bounce rate is low that's good it means that they're staying around for a while they're looking at some of your other things and they're taking action that could be clicking on a button to sign up to your mailing list or it could be visiting another post or another page or visiting your shop so ultimately that's what the bounce rate is it's used by Google Analytics but somewhere along the line Google um, Google search engines uh, might soon realize that when people search for something in Google and they click on your post or your page and then they go back to the search results, go back to the Google search results, Google might start to see that um, pattern forming and realize that post isn't answering people's questions. People are looking at your post saying, no, that wasn't the answer I was looking for and going back to look at other other results and maybe clicking on them. So, you know, the Google um, search engine is such a, a complex tool and how they can calculate this is beyond my, my knowledge, but that's how um, complex it is. But um, I don't want you to worry about it because there's three things that could um, determine the bounce rate. One is the quality of the page is low, so it's not offering the person visiting that page the answer. It's not set out right, There's, um, it's not answering, it's, it's long-winded, it's not written very well, it's not very clear. Um, there's nothing there for the, the visitor to engage with. They just read the post and that's it. So that's one reason. The second um, reason is plain and simple. The information wasn't what the searcher was looking for. And that's okay, I've done that many a time. I've looked at a recipe and thought, no, that's got too many ingredients, I'm not going to um, worry about that, and they just click away. And the search, uh, the third reason is, it is what they were looking for. They got their answer, they wrote down their recipe, they um, found out what they were looking for, and that's fine too. So that's why I want you to remember that bounce rate isn't something that uh, you should overanalyze or worry about too much because a high bounce rate really isn't an accurate reflection on the information that you're providing because you could still be providing 
the um, the user, the Google search user, the answer. But here's the thing: the bottom line in 2020 is to make sure that your content answers the question and that it's clearly written out, it's informative and um, meets all the other SEO um, principles. So uh, don't worry about bounce rate, just worry about having a well-written informative post and um, that's, that's the determining factor above anything else. Uh, the other thing is you need to be including calls to action on every single opportunity um, you can on your website or in your blog. So whether that's, I don't, I don't use pop-up um, email subscriber forms, but probably within two paragraphs of the post, I'll have a graphic, a call to action, um, sign up for this or buy this, or in my sidebar on my blog feed, I'll have the sign up form. You have to be enticing people and not I'm not saying sign up for um, sign up for my newsletter I mean really giving something to someone to encourage them to take action help them with their problems find out what their problems are you offer them this a solution and that will create that engagement and people will follow you even if it's to click on your um, social media Icons to follow you, they'll be taking some kind of action. So please use every opportunity on every page and every post to encourage people to take action, create a well-written post, and don't worry about bounce rate just yet. But as you progress, I would highly encourage you to um, use Google Analytics as a marketing tool. Maybe set yourself a reminder once a month at the end of the month to review your Google Analytics check the bounce rate, check which posts people have been landing on the most. You can check which posts people have been landing on, not taking any action and clicking away. You can see exactly how long they spend on these um, posts and pages. Google Analytics is a wonderful tool and I highly encourage you to um, just jump in there and have a look around. And you can also formulate a report on every kind of metric that you um, need from Google Analytics and you can send that to yourself automatically once a month um, and use that as a marketing tool. If people are clicking on more types of posts than others, create more posts like that. If they're not interested so much in some of the posts that you're creating, you know, try not to create more of those posts. So that's um, basically uh, what bounce rate is about. It's a Google analytic metric that measures um, when people visit your blog, don't take any action and then uh, click away. So use that as a marketing tool. Remember the bottom line is create good content, well set out content for SEO and it answers people's questions and queries. And I want you to have a fantastic week. I'll catch you again soon. Bye.